So getting medication into zoo animals isn't that easy. And if anybody's had a cat and ever tried to give it a pill, you'll probably realize that giving medication to domestic animals isn't that easy either. But try imagining giving a, a pill to a lion. Um, obviously with big cats, we don't tend to get hold of them and wrap them up in a blanket and coat the pill in some butter or something to help it slide down. Um, the lions are actually trained to come up to the edge of the enclosure to a target. Um, they know their names and they'll come to a specific spot. And as a reward for doing that, the keepers give them a piece of meat on a stick. So when they need to medicate them, all they do is they put the tablet in that piece of meat uh, and give it to them as a reward and the lions take it quite readily. So that actually makes it a lot easier in some cases. The primates are a little bit more difficult. Um, we try and give things treatment orally or by mouth um, because that's less stressful generally for the animals than catching them up and giving them injections. Um, however, the primates get quite wise to it and if you give them something they don't like the taste of, the next time you give them a treat, um, they tend to go, we don't really want that. So the keepers have to be very ingenious. But they can get to a point where they just refuse to take any treat off the keepers at all. Uh, and then we have to get a bit clever and think about how we can get that medication in. And we have had cases where we know what the right treatment is to give the animal, but the animal won't take it. And the only way we've been able to do it is to put the animal in a squeeze cage and inject it um, daily with, with its medication which obviously is more stressful for them, but um, the alternative is being very sick and uh, we can't let that happen either. If we can't do that, we might have to use the dart gun and actually dart them with a the dart. Um, that is a little bit more uncomfortable for the animal uh, and the dart tends to stay in for a little bit until the animal's moved around a bit and it falls out naturally but at least we can still get the medication in and if they hate coming into a house and into a squeeze cage that's another alternative. If you're giving a domestic animal treatment it responds quite well to being handled, it likes some extra cuddles, that's reassuring for it, but with a zoo animal handling is quite stressful so we try and minimise it if we possibly can. There are some times when the treatment involves a lot of handling of the animals and we have to weigh up whether the stress that causes the animal is worse than the stress of the problem that they're suffering from. And if you're doing that, you have to consider how likely it is to get better uh, with the treatment and how long that medication is going to have to be given for. Because if you're giving a medication for a long period of time, and the likelihood of getting better isn't that high, and what you're doing is very stressful to the animal, you may have to have that difficult discussion about whether you euthanize an animal, um, because that might be the kind of thing and the better thing for its welfare in the long run. So sometimes when we've done our diagnostic work, we may need to um, anesthetize our animals and either do some surgery, or take more samples or sometimes we just have to anaesthetize an animal because we're going to export it soon and we need to get some blood samples and do some health checks before it goes. If they're relatively small animals, sort of colobus size, baboon, um, and they're reasonably safe to handle, we will often do it up in the vet centre. That's a lot easier for the vets and the nurses because all our kits up here, it's all laid out where we need it. We've got everything to hand. Um, and you know, it, it's, it's nicely organised. But sometimes if we're doing procedures on something like a lion or a tiger um, or the elephant or the zebras, we can't bring those up to the vet centre. A, because they're too big and actually moving them up here is, is quite a, a, a task in itself. And because of the risk of doing it, in the vet centre we haven't got the strength and glass that they have in the enclosures we haven't got the barriers that we've got in the enclosures. So potentially, if our anaesthetic was to go wrong, which of course it wouldn't, but if it did, they could get out amongst the public a lot more easily if they were up at the vet centre. So if we're gonna do something in a lion enclosure, for instance, we have to write a plan to start with, with a list of all the equipment that we need to take down and all the procedures that we're going to carry out. And then the nurses, can spend several hours getting all that equipment together in boxes 
so that everything is organised and they know what's where so that we can just get it out down in the enclosure and um, set up everything in there like a mini operating room. Um, and we've got boxes up here in the vet centre at the moment that are all ready for a Tarkin anaesthetic which is going to take place in its enclosure where we're going to do some footwork and, and trim some overlong claws. And then if you've done this procedure in the, in the enclosure, the nurses then have the fun job afterwards of bringing everything back and it all has to be cleaned and disinfected and put away before the next job, which can take them another good couple of hours. So um, we all prefer doing things up in the vet centre if we can.